Okay, this video is going to be for explaining um, the derivation of our centripetal acceleration expression. So we're going to consider some object that's moving like this in a counterclockwise circle. We're going to assume it some, starts at some position here, and then at some time later, t, it's gone an angle delta theta. Okay. And we're going to measure delta theta in radians, which is important, uh, because that means that the distance traveled, this distance here, is going to be delta theta times r, where r is the radius of our circle. Okay? Um, that's the distance traveled. Okay. And if it's traveling at some speed v, then the distance traveled is also equal to vt. And that means that delta theta is vt over r. Okay. All right. Now, we would like to write the position as a function of time um, as a vector. Uh, so that displacement vector. So here at this moment in time, that displacement vector looks like this. Oops. All right. And my drawings have gotten a little bit clearer, so I'm going to draw that again down here. So I've got my displacement vector, this angle delta theta, and it's got an x component that we can call r cos delta theta, and a y component that we can call r sine delta theta. So uh, the displacement vector as a function of time is r cos delta theta i hat plus r sine delta theta j hat, okay? And now we would like to find ultimately the acceleration, but to find the acceleration, we're first going to find the velocity, right? So to find the velocity, we take a time derivative of r, so that's going to be v. And we've got uh, r d dt cos delta theta, because that's the only part that depends on time, right? The radius is not changing. Plus r d dt sine delta theta j hat. And so then we've got these two derivatives we need to do, d dt cos delta theta and d dt sine delta theta, okay? So for cos delta theta, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then by the chain rule, uh, we need to plug in, so let's just do that explicitly. So d dt cos, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in for my delta theta is vt over r. And so the time derivative of that is negative sine vt over r, and then by the chain rule, we need to also multiply times the derivative of the inside part, which is v over r. And then we'll do the same thing for the y component. So the derivative of sine is cosine. And then we need to multiply by the chain rule again. Okay. So now if I plug into that above, I've got that vt is negative r times v over r sine vt over r i hat plus r v over r um, cos vt over r j hat. And then these r's cancel. So I've got the v is equal to v sine vt over r i hat, oh, negative, uh, plus cos vt over r j hat. And then let's take a moment and check our sign here. So we've got that this is pointed in the negative x direction and the positive y direction at this point that we've drawn. Here's our, ob oops, uh, here's our object here. And at this point, we said our, our circle was going counterclockwise, so it's traveling in a direction that looks like this. 
and that is indeed in the negative x direction and the positive y direction. So signs make sense. Cool. So let's uh, proceed and let's also check the magnitude of V. So what is the magnitude of V? Well, that's just V squared sine squared VT over R plus V squared co squared VT over R square root. And then sine squared plus so squared is one. So this is just V, which is what we expected, right? The magnitude of V is constant. So we've got this expression uh, here for our velocity, which depends on time, but that, that dependence on time is only changing its direction. It's not changing its magnitude, okay? All right, and now let's check, let's take another derivative of velocity with respect to time to get our acceleration, okay? So we've got V, which is constant out front here, uh, and then we're gonna take the time derivative of negative sine VT over R, that's the ICAT component, and then cos over r and that's going to be the j hat component okay notice again that 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 i only was able to pull pull this derivative inside this velocity here because is because velocity is con constant so we're going to come back to that in a second okay so same thing as before take the derivative of these sine and cosines and we will get v times uh V over R, that's a factor that's coming from the chain rule, um, negative cosine VT over R I hat. And then uh, more or less the same thing for the J hat. I'm just taking the derivative of the cosine instead of the sine. Okay. And so I've got uh, negative v squared over r cosine vt over r i hat plus sine vt over r j hat, okay? Now notice that the direction of this vector is opposite our original vector. So it's exactly opposite to our radial vector. So it's pointing in towards the circle. That's what we expect, right? And then what's its magnitude? Well, again, we've got a cosine and a sine in here. So those aren't changing in magnitude. Um, and so the magnitude of the acceleration is ax squared plus ay squared square root of that, which is just going to be v squared over r, okay? So this is where our expression of the, um, of the, tangential acceleration, or sorry, excuse me, the centripetal acceleration comes from. So this is our final answer here that we were looking for, okay? Um, that's its magnitude, and then this here is the expression as a vector, all right? And then I'm gonna make a separate video for th uh, the case of non-constant velocity. So again, remember this is uh, centripetal acceleration under constant velocity. Actually, I'll point out before I stop this video that we are going to, uh, no, actually, I'm not, I'll, I'll just stop there. Okay, pick up next time on um, non-constant velocity.